when Dylan and I made Tickled, we thought that if we made this thing, people would see it and, you know, I don't know who, but, but some kind of authority would step in and go, you know, this is wrong, and they would do something about it and they'd shut it down. So I guess the Tickle King explores why that hasn't happened yet and the reasons behind it because you know they're complicated and i'm sick of people saying what happened <laughs> and now i can just say watch this thing and this will explain what's been going on so yeah i'm pretty stoked hi this is charlene jow with mary sue i'm here with david ferrier co-director of tickled and it's follow-up The Tickled King, which comes to HBO on Monday. And at the same time online, The Tickle King, which is a little follow-up piece that you'll hopefully enjoy. I think this whole thing went from a curiosity to a film fairly quickly because I discovered the tickling competition online and that seemed just like a fun, amusing thing, I guess. And then pretty quickly the company, they hired lawyers they started writing emails, then they sent these three guys to New Zealand to tell us not to make the film. And it, at that point, there was so much going on that it seemed obvious there was more to the story. So I think Dylan and I both sort of looked at each other and were like, yeah, we've got something here. There is a lightness to the topic because it's tickling, but then it goes into the serious kind of side because it's online harassment and bullying. And the balance between the two... It was tricky to get right because the whole time we were filming we found the balance hard because we'd be in these stressful situations and you know there were four of us that you know we had um, Dom our DP and um, Cam our soundy and Dylan and I in this van driving around America and there were times when we'd be really scared and then we'd look at each other and sort of go but this whole thing's just about tickling like why are we scared and I think the film kind of reflects that absurdity in a way because at times I don't think you know whether to laugh or to be more kind of uptight and that's kind of how we felt the whole way through. We've done this um, sort of 20 minute follow up to Tickled called The Tickle King and we include a lot of the media reaction in that because you know once the film came out yeah every journalist we talked to as we went on this road trip around America had to qualify it by saying you know it, it's just tickling but it's actually more and they all sort of that sort of watching other journalists try and explain it has been quite fascinating tickled's finally on hbo and it felt like where tickled ends it's very open-ended and you know there's been months that have gone by since we stopped filming and you know before we started filming again when we were on the road because you know the story kept coming back to us you know people from the world of tickling would suddenly be turning up at screenings and there were lawsuits and there was a lot of crazy stuff that happened and so that had to go somewhere and it just seemed like an appropriate time with it playing on HBO to go hey here's 25 minutes of what happened after the film came out and it just I don't know I, I think putting that sort of story somewhere right now seems like an appropriate thing to do and there might be more there might not be but at the moment it seems like a good sort of bookend to the whole thing. HBO has been really good because they've given us, you know, we can put this thing on HBO Go, it's this 20 minute thing. So I don't know, we might do another one if more stuff keeps happening. Um, we laugh at each other that there might be a Tickle 2 at some point, do a whole other feature. But you know, it depends and I think we're going to hear this year from a lot more people involved in this world because it's a story that stretches back 20 years and I think as more people see Tickled, the more people will go, oh, that thing happened to me, or I know something about that. So as we hear from more of those people, I'm thinking there might be more opportunities to do something else. Dylan and I are both fairly active on social media. We're on Facebook and Twitter. So if people know anything about the story, I mean, just jump on our social media and sort of share it with us. Because, you know, I was at a screening last night and this um, woman came up to me and said, it was so weird for me seeing this film because um, I was harassed by this person, you know, 18 years ago. And so there's all these people out there that have had these interactions and, you know, Dylan and I just want to hear from them. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting because the young men drawn into the world of tickling are shamed. That's sort of the game that Jane O'Brien plays with them. You know, they're in these tickling videos and then those videos are used against them. So I guess when we made the film, we included... Um, a guy, Richard Ivey, who is sort of an example of a good tickling fetishist, and we sort of wanted to give that side to the whole tickling thing. And I guess also in explaining what had happened to these young men that had been drawn into Jane O'Brien Media's operation, I guess 
we wanted to give some context to that so they wouldn't have to feel shame you know it was like explaining why they were in the situation they were in and i think anyone that watches the film understands the context of it and those videos become less powerful i suppose tickled ends on a bit of a open-ended sort of thing and i think tickle king ends on a very open-ended sort of thing as well because you know i don't want to give it away but it's like this world just keeps happening you know this whole world we discovered isn't going anywhere and it's still going on so that's kind of hopefully a call to action in a way the phone call with the stepmother in Tickled was important because it was a conversation that gave some context as to who David D'Amato was. You know, before that, he was almost just like this two-dimensional bad guy. You know, he had bully people, he'd harass people. But in speaking to her, I think I certainly felt that you understood a little bit about why he was the way he was, and the audience does as well. And so I think it was important to have that. Because, you know, people don't just end up doing bad things. I think there's a reason behind it, and that's what that phone call hopefully um, illustrates. We persevered through all the threats because I think we, it sounds really cheesy, but I think we had like a really good team. You know, Dylan and I um, and our producer Carthew and all of us, um, if one of us started getting too stressed, we'd just talk to the other person, and we were all going through it together. And that made it seem a little bit easier, I suppose. And it was just fascinating. Like, we, we couldn't drop it because, you know, every day we'd find something else out that was new or interesting or stimulating. And so whenever we sort of thought about giving up, we were just too curious. So that kind of kept us going as well. The whole reason I got into journalism was to meet people that have a much more interesting life than I do. And like it's a privilege. If I, I always think if I get to meet someone who's doing something interesting or something that's a bit offbeat, or something that's a bit strange to everyone else like treat that with respect like it's amazing what they do it's amazing that they're letting me talk to them and so that's kind of the approach that I take and I just I just like meeting people doing interesting things I mean if we all did the same old boring stuff you know it'd be a terrible life so it's great you've got people that are out tickling each other it's great that you've got all these different things happening and I just feel lucky to sort of be a part of it for a little while the reactions to the film have been interesting. I mean, mostly people do that stereotypical, we thought this was going to be one thing and it ended up being something else. The most interesting thing probably is people that arrived and discovered that they had a tickling fetish. So they were watching, there's a few slow motion scenes of tickling and I think most people are like, oh, that's a bit strange or it's, it's a bit odd watching someone being tickled. But a few people saw it and were like, oh God, like I really like that. And so a few of those people have come up to us who had no idea they were into tickling and now they know. So that's probably the funniest thing. And then people that have met people in the film. So, um, you know, I've met some of David D'Amato's students and, uh, you know, people that used to teach with him. And, and talking to those people is pretty fascinating as well. Jane O'Brien Media and everyone involved seems to get super angry when you insinuate that it's not a straight activity. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's odd to me as well. I don't know why that keeps... You know, there's a there's a scene in the Tickle King where David and Kevin, like two of the major characters from Tickle, turn up to a cinema and talk to Dylan, um, the co-director, about exactly what you just said. Like, they're worried that they're made to look like they're involved in videos that could be liked by gay people. Which is the least offensive thing. <laughs> <laughs> Completely. It's like, we're living in 2017. Like, it's not, it shouldn't be an issue. But, you know, right from the get-go, it's how it all started, you know. Um, I wanted to do a story, and the very first comment from them was, we don't want to deal with a gay journalist. And that sort of anger seems to have just continued right up until now. So I don't know why. It's, it's very strange. Filming and distribution with Tickled and the Tickle King was tricky because especially when we were shooting it we didn't want to break any laws because we knew that this company had millions and millions of dollars we didn't have million, millions and millions of dollars so you know there's certain parts in the film where I would have loved to have barged into a building with a camera and and put some questions out there but because I can't trespass I can't walk through that door and we're very careful as well just we have phone conversations because some states you're allowed to record the conversation you're having with someone other states you're not allowed to record that conversation so we'd sort of drawn up a little list of 
the laws for each state, what we could do, what we couldn't do. So that was difficult when we were filming it. And then, you know, just in the edit, the way we put things together, we had to just be incredibly careful about everything because, again, we didn't want to give them any opportunity to be able to sue us. Which he did anyway, you know, we've been, he's tried to sue us twice and that hasn't worked, but, you know, that's the joy of America, like, everyone loves suing here, it's this very strange thing that you do. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's an interesting time for these films to be out there because, you know, the president of America is, you know, some would argue that he is quite power hungry and he also loves suing people and he loves having that control over people and that's kind of the case that we had with Tickled. So, I don't know, it's something about America. People seem to like money, suing, and power. It's just like this... Tickle has all of those. <laughs> And Tickle has all of those things, you know? But to this sort of, in this weirdly extreme kind of way. So, yeah, I'm curious what Donald Trump would think of Tickle, if he'd watch it and sort of see any kind of elements of himself in there. But yeah, I think he's probably so centred on himself, he's probably not capable of those kind of mind games i think this the stuff you see in tickled is what you see much more widely at the moment whether it's with online harassment and i mean it's like a the harassment that we encountered is like a it's it, it goes so wide it's it's from picking on people without money it's using the courts against them um it's it's as simple as you know outing someone online it's, it's all the stuff that's kind of being talked about at the moment but with these really strange, odd examples of that. I mean, I'm hoping to move on to non-tickling related things <laughs> at some point. But no, it's been super busy. Not always. No, I don't want to be like making continuous tickled films for the rest of my life. Um, but no, it's been really fun. But I think, you know, it's, it's going to be busy after the HBO broadcast because I think Dylan and I will both probably hear from a lot of people with other stories about that world. But... After that, I'm hoping to step away and work on some other ideas that I have in the back of my head that aren't tinkling related. Um, I personally am obsessed with this documentary, Dear Zachary, which is incredibly tragic and like, it's, it's such a difficult film to watch. But it was just, I was motivated because it was one guy putting it together. He'd sort of shot it all himself. It was, quite, it was told in quite a, a madcap, personal kind of way, but it just showed me that you know you can make as long as your story is incredible like you, you you can you can do it it was just very motivating for me that you know one person kind of made that film themselves and that was kind of and the way that story unfolded i thought was really incredible so that was another touchstone the whole reason dylan and i made the film was to affect some change you know it's not like we wanted a card at the end of the film saying please help, you know, do this. But just in people watching the film, hopefully change will come about because I think we've shown some things going on that that are pretty bad and I like to think that someone will be able to do something about it, whether it's, whether, you know, we've revealed various things, issues with immigration or with potentially tax issues or the harassment issues and the more people that see it hopefully the more pressure will build for the authorities to do something so you know as it goes out on hbo dylan and i will reply to those emails as they come in from people that can potentially help or other victims or anyone that can help i guess the cause and you know i think just showing i guess all our research in a really clear and precise way hopefully that gives someone else the tools they need to do something about the situation so whether that happens or not we'll see but i mean it's it, it's certainly a possibility